Hi, my name is Joey Tyner and I am a Maternal Fetal Medicine Fellow at UNM Hospital. I'm excited to have the opportunity to talk to you about the basic principles and clinical applications of Doppler sonography in obstetric practice. Doppler sonography is used for the non-invasive assessment of circulation in many clinical conditions. This technique has been used for studying most of the major fetal circulatory systems, including the umbilical artery, vein, aorta, heart, and middle cerebral artery. It provides a unique opportunity to investigate human fetal hemodynamics and to use these findings for fetal surveillance, including to improve perinatal morbidity and mortality. Doppler frequency shift refers to the change in frequency of energy wave transmission by light or sound observed when relative motion occurs between the source of wave transmission and the observer. In this example, the police car siren provides the energy wave and there is a difference in frequency transmitted to each person due to the distance of the wavelength. An ultrasound beam encountering circulating blood is scattered by millions of red blood cells which cause the incident beam to undergo a frequency shift proportional to the speed of red cell movement. This relationship is expressed in the Doppler equation. If the Doppler shift and the angle of beam incidence are known, the velocity of blood flow can be determined and this equation forms the basis for clinical applications. Obstetric complications such as intrauterine growth restriction or IUGR and preeclampsia result in chronic fetal nutritive and respiratory deprivation. As the stress intensifies, the fetus mobilizes defensive responses that include preferential preservation of fetal growth over placental growth, changes in fetal movement pattern, deceleration of fetal growth rate, and eventually chronic hypoxia and acidosis. The primary fetal response to this deprivation is redistribution of blood flow to the brain, heart, adrenals, and placenta at expense of flow to muscles, viscera, skin, and other less critical tissues and organs. Changes in blood flow impedance in the fetal circulation underlie this phenomenon. Doppler ultrasound demonstrates these circulatory changes associated with fetal compromise and allows perinatal prognostication. The changes in fetal heart rate, Dopplers, and biophysical profile during fetal compromise reflect the fetal response to chronic hypoxia. Abnormal elevation of Doppler indices precedes loss of fetal heart rate variability and reactivity, eventually leading to decline and loss of fetal breathing and body movements. Reverse end diastolic velocity or flow in the umbilical artery, absence or reversed atrial wave in the ductus venosus, and rapid loss of heart rate variability portend a poor outcome. Agonal signs and death occur if there are no interventions. This progression provides the basis for determining the frequency of fetal testing in clinical practice. This is an ultrasound utilizing Doppler of an umbilical artery. Frequency in centimeters per second is displayed on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis depicts time. Doppler velocimetry is mostly used to assess for the downstream resistance to blood flow and the three most commonly used Doppler indices are peak systolic velocity, end diastolic velocity, and mean velocity. These are utilized to calculate the pulsatility index or PI and resistance indices and the systolic to diastolic ratios. The International Society of Ultrasound in Obstetrics and Gynecology has provided criteria for safety and Doppler ultrasound. It is very important not to expose the fetus to unnecessary ultrasound energy. Notice in this ultrasound image the mechanical index or MI and the thermal index or TI are displayed on the ultrasound screen. The provider would maintain the TI at less than 1.0 and limit the exposure time. The umbilical artery Doppler has a characteristic sawtooth appearance of arterial flow in one direction and umbilical venous flow 
in the other. With IUGR, there is defective trophoblastic invasion of vessels that lead to increased placental vascular resistance and decreased forward flow in the umbilical artery. With additional compromise, the diastolic flow approaches zero, and this is called absent end diastolic flow. With increased vascular resistance, the flow is reversed, and this is called reverse end diastolic flow. Here is an image showing the reverse end diastolic flow. These are the normal umbilical artery Doppler indices in blue at the 50th percentile. Of note, there are unique charts for evaluation of the maternal uterine artery and the fetal vessels, including the middle cerebral artery, aorta, IVC, ductus venosus, and the umbilical vein. Here is a clinical guideline for the use of umbilical artery Doppler ultrasound in managing pregnancies complicated with fetal growth restriction. With IOGR, recommend weekly umbilical artery Dopplers and non-stress test biophysical profile surveillance. If reassuring, delivery can occur at term gestation at 39 weeks. However, with absent end diastolic flow, recommended delivery is at 34 weeks. If prior to 34 weeks, recommend betamethasone administration and daily umbilical artery Dopplers and NST BPP. With reverse end diastolic flow, recommend delivery at 32 weeks. At any time, if the NST or BPP is non-reassuring, consideration of delivery is recommended. Your part as a nurse is critical for these patients. You are the front line during fetal surveillance by non-stress test. By notifying the provider of fetal heart rate decelerations, absence and variability, or reactivity, you will decrease perinatal mortality. Interpretation of Doppler ultrasound is complex, and the decisions regarding IUGR are not based on Doppler alone. There are other factors to consider, including gestational age, interval growth, amniotic fluid volume, non-stress testing, biophysical profile, and maternal factors. Since inaccurate information concerning fetal Doppler studies could lead to inappropriate clinical decisions, it is imperative that the measurements be undertaken and interpreted by expert operators, such as maternal fetal medicine specialists who are knowledgeable about the significance of Doppler changes and who practice appropriate techniques. Using color flow imaging, the middle cerebral artery can be seen as a major lateral branch of the circle of Willis running anterolaterally at the border line between the anterior and middle cerebral fossa. Here, an axial section of the fetal head is obtained at the level of the sphenoid bone. The blood velocity increases with advancing gestation, and this increase is significantly associated with a decrease in pulsatility index. Other Doppler indices include uterine artery, ductus venosus, and thoracic artery Dopplers. They can be utilized for IUGR, preeclampsia prediction, fertility, assessment of congenital heart disease risk, and aneuploidy risk, and the assessment of fetal acidosis. Umbilical vein and IVC Dopplers are utilized to assess fetal cardiac function and IUGR. Dopplers are also used in the assessment of multiple gestations, fetal anomalies, effects of medications, including after use of indomethacin to evaluate for premature closure of the ductus arteriosus. Dopplers are also used in surveillance of the fetus of a mother with a chronic medical disease. Doppler use in obstetrics is extremely complex. Umbilical artery Doppler use with IUGR has decreased perinatal mortality and Doppler of the middle cerebral artery has prevented unnecessary invasive procedures for fetal anemia. Your part is critical for these patients cannot be overemphasized because you are the front line during fetal surveillance by non-stress test and contribute to decreasing perinatal mortality on a daily basis. Thank you for your time and allowing me to introduce you to Doppler sonography use in obstetrics.